Right, so again, good morning and afternoon to everyone who can join us today. So welcome to the workshop. So our panelists will be sharing about you know, how EBA and data can work hand in hand to assist libraries in their content acquisition. So before we get started, there are a couple of house rules, which I will quickly share. So you'll notice that your audio and video has been turned off. So to ask a question, put it into the chat box and make sure that the settings is set visible to everyone. Um, this whole session will be recorded and the recording and the slides as well as the speaker's contact will be circulated to the registrants uh, via email. If you have any questions that is not answered, you know, please drop me an email. All right, so today's um, session will be kicked off um, by our APEC um, sales director, Stephen Chong giving you an update to the Reuters EBA program and a brief overview for those who are new to it, followed by experience sharing by University of Hong Kong, Kim Min Chan, after which uh, I will share a bit on the kind of support you should be asking from us once you decide to embark on this journey. So um, over to Stephen, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Stephen Chong, uh, representing the Reuters. Uh, I'm actually presenting from uh, Taipei today. Uh, this week, I'm here visiting some libraries to also discuss about uh, EBA. Uh, and in the situation where budget, uh, library budget is uh, under constraint, uh, I, I believe that uh, the EBA solution is something ideal uh, in such environment. And not only that, uh, I think what I want to stress more is uh, on how to use EBA as a collection development tool, right? So without further ado, let me just jump into my session. So I'd like to give an update uh, on our overall partners, right? We currently have about 36 publishing partners, right? 36 publishing partners that include the university press and non-university press uh, partners. And within the, uh, our EBA, there are about, out of the 36, there are 30 publishers uh, participating in our EBA model, right? And so far, we have uh, 22 university press uh, join the Greuter uh, to allow us to help them for their global dissemination of uh, knowledge. We have a majority of the university press from America, uh, North America. And we started to get some uh, UK university press. And in fact, we have recently uh, signed a agreement with 15 Canadian university press. They'll be joined the, the Greuter family and we'll be loading their titles onto our platform. Right? But within the EBA, currently there are 30 publishers. Right, and there are about 9,000 titles from six university press partners, which the Kreuter has the exclusive uh, archive. So they are back files. We have the exclusivity and it's only available through the Kreuter. We help them to digitize the physical book into uh, ebook format. So this gives you a quick overview of our partners uh, situation. If we look at the uh, content growth, uh, overall, if we look at from 2018 to up to 2023, uh, looking at January each uh, year, our total content has been growing at an average of at least 20%. Right? Uh, the blue part that you're looking at is actually the English content, and the red is the non-English. So we do have uh, other languages like uh, German, French, and some of the Spanish. And let's look at this slide because majority of our uh, libraries in within Asia Pac, uh, they would go for English only content. So English only content, we have about near to we have just passed about eighty thousand titles within EBA, right? So within EBA again. We are going at a rate of at least 20 at some point, some years, uh, there are 30% in terms of new uh, 
new content. They may not be all friendlies, but it's all content that we bring a uh, new university press onto our platform. And like, for example, Princeton University Press, uh, from time to time, they may give us a new content, which is not available uh, in the past, right? And so we have helped to digitize some of the content or we have gotten new publishers that join us. So our EBA content, uh, English language, growth has been uh, pretty impressive in the last uh, six years. So let's have a quick look about uh, what are the benefits, right? So in the beginning of my slide, I mentioned about uh, we kind of like encourage a library to use uh, EBA as a big data tool for collection development. So when you start to see the usage, the patterns, and what are the subjects, uh, or from which publisher, University Press, and where they are from, which copyright year, it gives you a better idea of uh, what other user your researchers are actually using. And that helps you to determine uh, what are the type of uh, content uh, that you want to build for your library collection development to align with the university research uh, direction. Right. They might at times there might be a new change in a direction on maybe there's a new uh, offering of courses and there are more users now using certain contents. But again, there are certain uh, liberal arts content which cut across all subjects, all courses, which may be quite difficult to sometimes uh, to narrow down what it's what are the content that are necessary to support those uh, cross discipline uh, research area. So I will encourage uh, use EBA as a big data tool to help you to determine what you should be buying based on evidence rather than on a speculative or predictive uh, uh, purchase, right? And the titles are added on a monthly basis. So whenever all titles, whether it's a new or a new publishers that uh, come on board, once it's ready, we'll load it on a monthly basis. And the titles are DRM free, unlimited users. Uh, you can support remote access. And this is particularly useful during the uh, COVID period. We do have uh, universities, uh, students that are stranded. They can't uh, get into the, uh, like for example, in Australia, there are many students who can't get into uh, Australia, but their students are still able to access uh, remotely. So I will do a quick, comparison between EBA and DDA, right? Uh, because uh, EBA, I feel that it gives the library more control on how they want to build a collection and choose the titles they think that is more uh, appropriate for the libraries to, to convert into perpetual access. So from a perpetual title selection, uh, perpetual access title selection, the evidence-based uh, acquisition EBA, allows the librarian to, based on a usage evidence report, to select the titles, right? But for like DDA, it's all triggered by the patron uh, downloads. When you hit the uh, uh, certain specific number that is agreed with the uh, uh, vendor, the, it will trigger a, a so-called conversion to perpetual access, right? And I also feel that uh, from a budget management point of view, uh, it gives the librarians uh, more flexibility to decide on the subjects or titles uh, based on your collection development strategy. But uh, on a DDA, uh, a lot of time, it's all based on uh, number of uh, seconds or minutes based on number of uh, downloads that will trigger and deduct from the uh, deposit, the commitment, right? So. Uh, this is just a quick overview that I feel uh, the EBA gives a better uh, tool, a better offer for libraries, uh, for librarians to decide what is best in terms of the content. Let's look at a quick uh, next few slides. I just want to show you on the, the usage statistics and the ROI. So I use this term ROI. Very commonly, people will talk about the cost per download. But I want to also use a return on investment point of view to illustrate how we look at uh, the usage statistics 
and the investment on uh, such a uh, EBA model. So these are two large uh, universities in Asia PAC, right, from the same country. The first one is a long-term EBA customers. They have been with us for many years, right? So I extract uh, just uh, from 2019 to 2022. And the other one is a new customers just started last year. So the initial year result, I only have a year of a uh, result. So if you can look at this uh, data here, we are looking at it from a unpurchased titles only. So I have, we already removed all the existing holding. So over the years, they've converted uh, the number of titles from the EBA or they have used the EBA as a collection development tool to decide what are the university press or publisher they would like to purchase by collections. So we have uh, already eliminated all these uh, existing holdings, right? So these are the titles, information statistics, which are accessible via our EBA program. So if you look at uh, by year, on the average, right, uh, the spending have in the so called the spending has kind of like fixed. They have not, in fact, it has reduced slightly, right, the commitment amount. But the number of titles download access, right, uh, 2021, there is a search because I think more students are accessing it remotely. And 2022, uh, here we are seeing that uh, there's a lower number of titles assessed because. Uh, during this period of time, uh, the university have purchased quite a large number of uh, collections. So that collections uh, as uh, usage statistics are not counted here. So you might see that uh, why is there a drop? But in fact, because there's a large number of titles that has been converted into a uh, perpetual access. So we are looking at this uh, titles that are not owned by the institutions. right? So overall, if you look at 2021, uh, number of titles that have been uh, accessed is about 9,956 number of downloads. And we calculate this, uh, the list price is based on the 9,956 that is worth about 1.285 million, right? So the breakdown of uh, the Greuther title being accessed and our publishing partners. So when I look at the uh, number of titles being converted on average, Every year is about 650 titles, right? And the ROI, how I calculate is based on their commitment amount, right? Uh, using this to compare against the title that has been accessed, the list price. So what the library is actually paying is a fraction of what the list price or the total list price of title been accessed, right? So they find that the return on investment is really fantastic. And that's the reason why it has been ongoing for more than uh, five years. And for this new university that have joined, right, the ROI is also uh, looking very fantastic, 2,000 over percent, right, near to 3,000 percent. And eventually, about 275 titles have been selected to convert into perpetual access. But the number of titles that have been accessed is more than 7,000, right? So let's kind of like move into uh, uh, another region right now. Specifically, let's look at Hong Kong because we started a uh, consortium uh, proposal uh, last year for our EBA. So this is just a six-month uh, duration. We're looking at about 4,518 titles that have been accessed. The yeah, return on investment at this moment is about 3,000. 500 over percent. And the common uh, measurement that we use is cost per download. So we are looking at about 0 0.8 uh, dollars, 80 cents euro per download, right? So, so far just, it's a, this university has signed a three-year contract because they started uh, with a three-year contract because they find that they are familiar with EBA and they know that the uh, return on investment is typically really good and they have signed a three-year uh, contract with us. And just within six months alone, we're looking at a, a, a fantastic uh, return in, on investment, 3,000 over percent, right? So just specifically looking at the usage pattern uh, from this university in Hong Kong, right? So majority of the titles is actually coming from Princeton University, followed by Harvard, 
University of Hawaii, Edinburgh University. So here it gives you a breakdown of where are most of the access uh, coming from uh, the, by publisher. If you look at by subjects, a lot of the uh, usages are coming from a social science, uh, from history, language and linguistic, theology and religion. This is, uh, again, the statistics of uh, that particular university. Every university may be different, right? So, but by looking at it, you can see that uh, because the EBA, 70% of our content are humanity, social science. So very naturally, you will see more towards the humanity, social science. And in fact, even universities in uh, China, which is uh, S&T, a science and technology uh, focused uh, university, they still see a huge uh, uh, usage coming from our humanities and social science uh, EBA uh, content, right? So a big, quick, uh, a quick overview about uh, what's happening, the trend. And in fact, uh, from 2020, we have only two customers in Asia Pac uh, that is using EBA. Now we have about 20. And I'm looking at, uh, from, at the rate of... Uh, how we are promoting, creating market awareness uh, among the different uh, cities and territories, we are seeing that uh, people start to uh, understand that during a budget constraint situation, they would like to give a try on EBA. And when they look at uh, the return on, on investment that they put in every dollar, give them more than uh, some even 50 times return, right? They, they find that this is a very sustainable uh, program, right? So thank you very much. I'll pass over to uh, Kitman. Please feel free to ask any questions, uh, chat it in and we will answer. Mm, hello, uh, let me share my screen first. Okay. Uh, can you see my slides? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, thanks for inviting us uh, uh, for do, uh, doing the sharing. And my name is Kitman. I'm the social sciences and business and economics librarian from the University of Hong Kong Libraries. So my major role is doing uh, collection development for the uh, for the two faculties uh, in the university, and also. Um, uh, doing some library workshops and uh, doing the uh, information service uh, um, uh, training. Okay. So let's start. And this is the agenda of today. And uh, firstly, I will give you some background information of our university and our libraries. And then we will uh, share uh, our existing ebook acquisition channels with you guys. And we come to our uh, EBA programs we are currently uh, participating in. And, uh, and then we will offer will, uh, the usage and some high use titles. And then we go to the insights part. And the last part will be uh, some sharing and discussion. And uh, at, at the beginning, uh, if you have uh, where, uh, if you have questions or um, uh, inquiry, you may uh, uh, do it uh, in the chat box, and I will try my best to answer it. Okay. So uh, this slide will show you some background information of our university and the libraries. So uh, the University of Hong Kong is a research-oriented university with 10 faculties. Uh, we have a wide range of uh, subjects like uh, medicine, law, uh, science, engineering, uh, arts, social science, business. And currently, we have about uh, 33,000, more than uh, near four, uh, 40,000 headcounts. Uh, we offer undergraduate programs postgraduate programs, including MPhil and PhD programs, and also taught master programs. And this is the uh, some basic information of the university. And for our library, uh, you will see from these two boxes here, uh, we spend uh, our uh, 
uh, resource fund. Uh, each year we have um, 120 million Hong Kong dollars for our library resources fund, uh, including purchasing uh, all the prints or uh, e-materials, including one-off and ongoing subscriptions. And um, you, you, you see that we have over 90% spent on e-resources subscriptions. So uh, we have uh, a very big concern on uh, how we can uh, make good use of our money. And from the uh, from the boxes here, you will see our library collection. And currently we have uh, printed books about 3 million uh, and the growth is very slow. And uh, we concentrate most of our money on uh, e-resources and e-books. And you will see we have around uh, 8.5 million e-books we have, including uh, in subscription base or we own the uh, e-books. And we have around uh, 1000 databases. And uh, in, in the libraries, we have the main library and also the branches. And um, uh, in each subject area, we are present, uh, represented by uh, a colleague. Okay? Uh, we have to do the, uh, as I said, collection development and also the liaison uh, role. And we also conduct uh, workshops for supporting teaching and learnings. So let's move on. Okay. So this is the, the uh, ebook acquisition channels we are having. So you will see for individual title subscription, we have uh, approval plan and direct order. So uh, the approval plan is uh, we work with our vendor uh, uh, YBP and uh, we, we uh, set up our uh, approval plan profiles. And then once a title meets with Hong Kong uh, U profile, we will trigger the purchase. I think it's very common practice we are having uh, uh, among the uh, academic libraries. We also have uh, direct orders for ebooks. So those orders will be uh, recommended by uh, teaching department for supports their course learning or course teaching or from general library user like the uh, students or um, the, our readers or borrowers. And also from our subject librarians, uh, we recommend some titles which may be uh, related to their curriculum. And then uh, we also have uh, purchase and subscription uh, to subject packages. Like uh, we have the, uh, for example, we have uh, Emerald eBooks. We uh, subscribe to their uh, uh, several collections. And we also have uh, DDA programs. And uh, we we used to have uh, several DDA programs like uh, JSTOR DDA Buying Cup, and um, and you guys know that uh, we have turned uh, they have turned on the uh, available titles, and uh, if it meets the agree uh, um, usage, and then it will trigger the purchase automatically. And then we also have eBay programs with a participant. Uh, we, we take part in a lot of different uh, eBay programs from different publishers. And uh, again, it's like uh, we committed uh, a certain amount to, um, uh, to a pool of titles, and then the uh, users can discover the titles. And uh, at the end of the contract period, we uh, make the selection based on the usage. Okay. So uh, this uh, the summary of the last slide. We have uh, several uh, acquisition channels, and uh, in Hong Kong U libraries, uh, we acquire both uh, Western and CJK materials, and uh, we uh, I will concentrate on uh, Western uh, EBA programs in this section. And uh, for CJK, we have one uh, eBay programs from uh, I read eBooks. And for Western one, uh, you see those uh, familiar names like uh, CUP, Gale, uh, JSTOR, Sage, Elsevier, and Wiley. Okay, so I don't uh, go into uh, each uh, in very detail. And then I move on to the next slide. Okay. So this is our uh, overview uh, or the uh, usage summary. And uh, you will see the uh, uh, 
In this table, you see the, uh, the title available for access in our contract period. So I selected five um, uh, programs uh, for, for you guys to have a quick look. And uh, the, this column, you see the number of titles we committed uh, in last year okay? and the amount spent. So this is the uh, roughly uh, uh, amount. So I cannot give the exact amount uh, due to some uh, the agreement. So I give you the uh, roughly amount. And uh, we also uh, calculate the cost per title. So you, sh uh, you will see uh, we have uh, the biggest pool we have are from uh, Wiley. And we also committed a lot, about uh, 400 titles, and then we commit for uh, uh, this amount uh, for uh, last year. And uh, you can see uh, from the cost per title, uh, JSTOR, which is the lowest, okay, 80 US, and uh, Elsevier, uh, you guys know that it's, uh, it's relatively expensive. So this one, you see uh, more than 200 uh, for cost per title. So we move on to the next one. And then this one, uh, you will see the usage. And uh, I would like to highlight that we have different contract days. So uh, I try to extract the uh, uh, usage of latest year for you guys to take a reference. And uh, again, you see the uh, usage of Wiley is the highest one, but uh, it's very interesting. The highest used title is uh, go to Elsevier. The highest number, the high, uh, the uh, the highest used per title is more than one thousand is from uh, Elsevier, and you see the uh, cutoff point from uh, like fourteen. Uh, ranges from uh, 45 or 46. Uh, we try to find a like a, a very common uh, usage pattern, but uh, it seems not easy. Okay, you see the um, range of usage uh, varies a lot, and uh, the usage I uh, take um, is uh, the total item request, which is the uh, uh, counter five stats uh, stats, uh, which reflect the total number of times. Uh, of the full text of a content item was downloaded or wielded. So we try to capture all the uh, TIR from all uh, from different EBA programs and then calculate the uh, cost per use for title and the average um, use. Okay. And then I would like to share some uh, high use title in different EBA programs with you guys. And you will see from uh, CUP, we have this one is about political censorship in British Hong Kong. And uh, this one is also uh, very uh, local. You will see this is uh, from Hong Kong, this one talking about Hong Kong. And for Sage, uh, it uh, may deal to their, um, uh, their um, I mean, uh, they have lots of research uh, handles. So the high, high use title is also a handle, you will see. And for Elsevier, this is the uh, uh, title, which have more than 1,000. It's a uh, book on GM food. And uh, this one uh, is from Wiley, and more than uh, 900, uh, near 1,000, I would say. Okay? It's a book on um, pay tech technology. And then uh, we move on to a uh, individual um, individual uh, program usage. Uh, you see this one is from um, Elsevier. So I captured the um, last year um, uh, usage for you guys to have a quick look. And uh, you see uh, the here we have the mean and medium usage for the uh, uh, selected titles. You you brought the uh, sorry you brought the uh, video cam okay, and you see um, there are the total number of titles we can access is more than six thousand, and the total use is forty uh, thirty four thousand okay. And uh, 
we we try to rank the title like this. The highest one uh, more than one thousand you will see from here, and the one is from um, uh, rank from um, one usage one, and then the one hundred and eighty five. And then we do a similar analysis for Wiley too, okay? And uh, you see, um, I try to compare two years for you guys. And uh, this is the table. And uh, we commit the same amount around 5% for the purchase. And this is the uh, usage of last year of the select title. So we try to rank uh, this. So you see uh, a few numbers they have uh, ranked uh, the the uh, the usage are very very high and then uh, you see the average here and the mean and median. Okay, so so I see a question. What matrix? So uh, we use a TIR. So I think I already answered in the table. Okay, and so let's move on. Yeah, here. So this is the uh, roughly summary how much we spend on uh, eBay programs in 2021 and 22. Uh, so I um, uh, I reveal the amounts we spend on one time purchase is around 10 million Hong Kong dollars. So one time purchase include all the uh, ebooks and all the uh, materials which uh, is one off. And the amount spent on EBA is 1.6 million Hong Kong dollar. And a proof of pen we still uh, spend uh, quite a number, so uh, 2.5 million. And uh, you see EBA program is around 15% uh, on our one-off purchase. So this is a quick uh, summary. And then you see uh, how we adopt the model. So we try to um, justify our uh, selection by usage uh, based on the usage statistics. And um, we look at the usage as a evidence to make our decision. And uh, once, uh, one of the most beautiful thing of eBay is the uh, cost control. So you can, um, uh, the users can access to all and we can um, like to pay a reasonable amount and then access to a lot of titles. And at the end of the contract, we make our selection uh, based on the, uh, the usage evidence. And uh, it will uh, save our time. So it facilitates our decision-making. Uh, so we, we can have some evidence to um, uh, make sure the money uh, we are well spent and worth spent. Okay. And again, the benefits, as I mentioned, we assess a lot of titles in, uh, in a certain period, uh, usually for a discounted fee, we negotiate it. And uh, time saving, again, uh, it's safe. Uh, um, the selection uh, mainly are done by the acquisition staff. So if they have any uh, problems in making the uh, final judgment, they will go to the uh, subject librarian to ask for the uh, advice. And some of the titles they have, uh, when they do the ranking, you, they will see, uh, they have same uh, cutoff point in the usage. So uh, they need to make a decision. So they will go to the subject librarians uh, for this uh, scenario, but most of the time they can do it um, uh, on your own and then uh, the CD, uh, the head of CD will do the revision and then um, uh, make the purchase finally. And also uh, the commit amount usually um, we can uh, own the titles for perpetual access. And we also talk about some, um, uh, eh, sorry, what's wrong? I'm sorry, sorry for that. We will talk about some uh, factors determined to join a eBay program or we uh, make a, a deal with the vendor. So we will uh, like to uh, compare the cost 
of an ebook in the eBay program and um, an ebook selected from sleeps. And we also checked the scope of the uh, pool of books available. And we also anticipate the usage. And you will see uh, for Wiley and Elsevier, we, we can expect uh, it will uh, have a very high usage due to um, their subjects um, uh, matters. And for, and for the uh, factors determining, we also um, like, uh, we will check uh, how the program can assist the um, automated um, acquisitions. So we can minimize the cost of our uh, time cost and the administration cost. Okay, uh, we, we also talk about some impacts for the users. And as mentioned by, um, at the beginning, uh, as mentioned by the uh, the voters, uh, during the uh, COVID-19 outbreak, uh, the access to eBay uh, ebook programs are very, very high because most of the uh, teaching are, uh, are done online. So they did a lot uh, like, uh, searching in our library web page and to discover the resources for their own study and also for teaching. And another impact for users, uh, they may not be aware, but uh, they actually, they are exposed to more uh, titles for their discovery. And uh, there is a little drawback. Um, uh, I think it's from our uh, Jay's Tor DDA program. Uh, some, uh, I think some uh, teaching staff they bookmark a title for future use or studies, but that one uh, uh, is unfortunately is not that high usage. So uh, it's what disappear from our web page after the contract period, and then they uh, write to us uh, why the book disappear. Uh, uh, because in their mind uh, it's available on the library web page, you guys already purchased it, but uh, they they may not know much about DDA or EBA program. So we need to explain to them. And uh, we finally, we uh, like uh, purchase the title manually for, for them. So this is a, a little drawback. And for reflections from, uh, from our, uh, uh, staff. And uh, when we review the uh, high use titles, you will see, uh, we, we will see we have many uh, usage on handbooks or textbook. And uh, it come to a point that uh, we may, we have to review our city policy, uh, our, uh, how we purchase the uh, titles for the users and for the uh, staff and students. And uh, we also want to develop like uh, something like uh, best practice or guidelines for uh, joining EBA and how to uh, select the titles. And um, we, we want to do some systematic review on our usage um, and the uh, eBay program management. And, uh, but due to the change of uh, our uh, city, uh, the, the staff in city, so we, we cannot uh, 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 make the plan uh, uh, very smoothly. So uh, we, we still have to um, have more time to uh, observe the usage and then uh, develop our guidelines on uh, managing EBA. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, this is my sharing. I hope uh, we can have some more uh, insights discussion and we can learn from each other from our uh, experience. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to um, share the next um, section, which is on the um, support for customers. Let me just share my screen. We should be seeing the presentation mode. Okay. Yes. All right. Um. So, so this section is about what basically happens after you decided to embark on this journey with the Greuter. So, um, our marketing and sales support continues to interact with the customers even after the sales is done. 
So this includes on-body series, um, extended support, proactive outreach to identify small roadblocks before they become a big issue so that you know, the EBA journey and experience is an enjoyable one for your customers and also your users. Um, so sometimes we have questions from librarians when you know they come and tell us about you know, they have limited time and manpower to promote the materials that um, they're currently um, having and or they do not have information to, um, to promote the collections to create awareness and sometimes they want to get feedback on how users are feeling about these acquired resources that they have at the library. So let's look at some of the um, support um, and resources that can help you achieve this. Um, so as a start, uh, we will provide an onboarding session at a time convenient to your team, uh, be it from the technical side, cataloging, acquisition, subject librarians. It can be offline in cases where we have sales presence to conduct it, or it can be online via Zoom. And in this session, um, your team will get to know more about EBA content, um, some of the useful systems that they can you know, uh, get access to, to get started on reports and analyzing. Uh, there has also been a regular uh, schedule set up for communication purpose to EBA customers regarding updates to the content developments. Report frequency in terms of you know, metadata, usage reports, you can re request on an ad hoc basis or on a regular basis to be sent to you. And the entire support team at the Greuter consists of the marketing team, the customer service, as well as personnel from the metadata side. Right, um, next is the end user communications. Um, work with us um, to create a unified and localized message for your library users. So make sure that they know, you know what they're entitled to. We can help you to craft out that message and make it available in multiple formats. And you can simply repurpose the content or broadcast it as it is through your internal channels. And lastly is you know, helping you to engage with the users. So this can be a physical or online event, depending on the content we agreed on. We have worked with a number of institutions before um, to host workshops that allow users to be familiar with the Reuters uh, platform and the publishing program. We share tips and tricks to search for content. And we also run quizzes and interactive activities which is welcomed by students as they engage with the resources in a fun manner and get rewarded at the same time. And through all this session, we always make it a point um, to encourage feedback from your users so that we can report this back to you at the end of the activities for further assessment. So that's the end of my short presentations. I'm just going to um, leave you with um, some of the testimonials that our customers and users have been saying about these activities. And I hope to work with some of you in the near future. So for any question regarding marketing support, you know, feel free to drop me um, at the emails that we'll be posting um, after this event. And this slide will be shared with all of you as well. So I'm going to stop share, and then I'm going to have a look at the question and answer sections and see, oh, we have quite a lot of questions coming through. Mm -hmm. So um, the first one will be to Hong Kong U. Um, so it's a, a quick track quick question about what metric do you use at Hong Kong U? Unique title requests or total item requests or, you know, both? Uh, we, we, we use uh, total item requests. Uh, we actually, uh, uh, the staff, our staff, uh, our acquisition staff, they grab all the reports, uh, including um, uh, title requests and uh, TIR. Um, but uh, when we make the final decision, we will look at the uh, total item requests. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and do you think it is necessary to have some reader education to raise awareness for the EBA program? Mm. For me, it's for me. Yes. Uh, uh, we 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 uh we do not particularly uh advertise a uh, ebook collection. Usually, we we do uh, education user education on databases. Um, uh, for uh, for ebook is uh rather on their own discovery from our uh, uh from our primo or we we used to call a library catalog. Um. Yes. Um. Okay. And and it's some. Uh, I I feel that it may not easy to explain the EBA programs to them. Uh, it's quite uh, uh 
complicated and and from the user point of view they they only want to have the full text when they view the ebook they they do not really care how you you guys uh, really have purchased or licensed the books that's my yeah. point of view maybe um, i can just, just add yeah. a point to it uh mm. for libraries already have a discovery services primo or alma uh mm. eds mm. it's not a problem because it's up to individual yeah. to do their search and find the content but there are certain uh, mm. countries where discovery services are not available and uh -huh. they may want to do a bit of uh, awareness, mm. like maybe putting up a banner on their library homepage indicating that there's such a resources because otherwise uh, it's not visible because the, uh, mm. there's mm. no discovery services. They need to get into a publisher uh, platform to do, the, uh, to do a better search in mm. terms of contents. Otherwise, they have mm. to upload the entire mark record, which is not advisable because if you oh. no longer want to use the uh, the EBA, there's a lot of mark record you need to remove from an OPEC system. So again, mm, depends mm. on the uh, the library setup. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, from from my point of view, uh, the I think uh, is the uh we, we the most important thing is the user can discover the uh our contents from the from primo uh it seems sometimes the ebook titles um is it, it's not come to their search uh, usually they a lot of articles will uh, pop up in, from their search and and the user they 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 only type the keywords and they may not uh, aware they have to select um, uh, uh, between books and articles and then uh, like the articles results will uh, ran the uh, at the at the first few pages, and then the ebooks records may be not um, uh, easily um, discoverable. So this is so yeah, this I mean, is from, the, the, yeah, from, the discovery engines. The, yeah, yeah. From our our point of view, I think as much as possible, uh, yeah. we want to see the actual behavior, so we don't want to uh, intervene mm -hmm. with uh, kind of external marketing. But there are some libraries who need some help. So yeah. uh, our metadata, everything, it's all uploaded to the major discovery services every month. So mm -hmm. every month, we, when we have new titles, it will be also updated to the uh, discovery services. Mm -hmm. So yeah. again, as much as possible, we hope that uh, it's through the natural discovery. And yeah. what the <laughs> metrics, the earlier yeah. metrics uh, that I've shown earlier, it's all uh -huh. purely based on the library's uh, discovery services. So we have not really worked with them directly on any marketing uh, mm. at all. I see. Okay. Um, moving on to the next question. Um, so for Stephen, um, how does publishers come up with the price? They are widely variable. And also note that one publisher cut the price of excess <laughs> in half after we cancel. So... Uh, there's a few ways of how publisher determine the price. And if you look at uh, Kipman's presentation earlier, she have uh, shown the number of titles available by each of the publishers. So if you look at from like the Kreuter point of view, we have uh, almost 80,000 titles available. And it's impossible to charge uh, based on a agree even like a five percent of committed value if we base on five percent it's huge right if you look at uh eighty thousand titles uh, in english the value is worth about 20 million euro so it's impossible for us to use like uh, based on a percentage so we always uh, try to determine based on the university tier whether it's a research uh, focused university tier one tier two tier three then based on the fte and from there, we try to uh, come up with a, uh, a pricing grid. And so it's impossible that uh, at 8,000 titles, let's say charge at 40,000. Uh, 40, uh, so 8,000 titles in that EBA, it's worth probably uh, more than uh, a million. And the publisher might come up with uh, a 40,000 or 30,000 based on the university tier one, two, three, and FTE. But from our point of view, if our content is like 80,000, we can't move the price to uh, from 30,000 to 300,000, 10 times the price. So we can't. We have to look at uh, mm. the realistic 
a budget point of view from a library. Uh, even though when we keep on increasing a number of contents, it brings more value. So in fact, you see the first case uh, study from a large university over the four years period. The usage, in fact, the number of titles access has increased, even though they are five years with, uh, with Dick Reuter, and they've bought large number of collections uh, based on the usage to build up their library collection. But because every year we still add on uh, new content, the, uh, the number of title access, the usage uh, statistics are still looking really good. In fact, the return on investment has uh, over the years also improved, right? So I think uh, from a, a quick summary is publishers typically look at uh, the size of universities, the, whether they are research, whether they are more uh, community college style, or they are more uh, of the uh, a third tier city uh, universities, the budget of uh, more constraint. So we, we kind of like pack it based on that uh, grid to determine the price to come with an agreement. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Um, so the next one is to um, Hong Kong U. Do you consider the copyright dates or years of those titles requested? Uh, copyright dates. Uh, uh, mean the uh. Yeah, I guess it will... dates. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, in the past, we haven't. Um, uh, we 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 do not uh, consider this uh, the copyright dates. But when we will uh we when we review the selection uh the list for selection, uh the titles with usage, we discover that some of the titles are pretty old, and then we try to exclude them uh from uh, from 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 our selection, and then uh when do the negotiation, we try to um just cover those uh titles published uh, recently, maybe five years, recently uh, recent five years. Okay. Um. Next one for Stephen. Can you go over the calculation on how the ROI percentage sure. came about? Uh, for example, if the total number of titles access, it's uh, this a thousand uh hundred dollar for example. All right. The total number of uh title access and the lease price total worth is hundred dollar. Right. And if the commitment is uh a dollar. Right, so that's how I use the uh, uh, number of total value of the title being excess, a hundred dollar, then divided by the uh, the commitment amount, a uh, dollar. That's how I get like uh, one thousand uh, percent. Right, so if uh, a university have excess a value of one million euro worth of titles uh, during the last twelve months, and if they are commitment is only about uh, $10,000. That's where I get a percentage, a uh, thousand over, a uh, thousand percent of uh, return on investment. So every dollar you put in, in your investment, how much value you are getting out from uh, the program. So rather from uh, strictly looking at the cost per download, sometimes we have to look at uh, what is the total value that we are offering to the uh, researchers, to the students for every dollar that you put in. So that's how I kind of like calculate the uh, return on investment. But you can also look at uh, the, the number of times, right? A uh, different way of looking at it is like, uh, I put in uh, $10,000 and I have a million uh, usage, then that is a uh, uh, hundred times of uh, return from the amount of money I invested. All right. Uh, so a quick question. Um, could you tell which university presses are exclusive to the Reuters program? Uh, so the earlier uh, slides, there are six university press that is exclusive and of which uh, there are four of them that is available through uh, the EBA. So there are about 9,000 titles uh, from the six university press. And we are the one that helped them digitize the physical print book into digital ebook format. So we own the exclusivity of those uh, back files. These are mainly the back files. And so unlikely uh, you may have purchased those titles in the past through uh, the aggregator because 
it's not available in ebooks uh, format at all. I mean, of course, it's possible that you own the physical book, but in the ebooks format, uh, at the moment, it's only available through the Reuters platform. Okay. And um, the last question in the chat box to Hong Kong U, I'm going to rephrase it slightly. How do you make sure that the titles that you're going to purchase are not purchased before from other platforms because you're on multiple programs and with yeah. JSTOR as well? Yeah. Uh, we, we have to do it uh, at the last stage. We do the the, the uh, after we 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 have the uh, uh, potential list. Yeah. When 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 the program is running, we we cannot do the the the, the, the number of titles is too large. Yeah. So we just mm -hmm. uh, like to uh, do the the dip on multiple programs when we make the final decision. It's, it's similar, like uh, if they are purchasing uh, through the Reuters, we now offer about 30 publishers uh, oh, through yeah. the EBA. Yeah. I, I, so I, I, will... I know that they, they have the double case in between, but we can yeah. only do it at, at the last stage. Yes, so we will do a dedupe from the existing holdings and uh -huh. provide that uh, list, the, the yeah. final uh, usage statistics after we dedupe from our mm. system, we can tell all the existing holding. So libraries still need to probably, still need to do the uh, dedupe yeah. from yes. the other aggregator yes. that you are using, yeah. whether it's yes. JSTOR or uh, AppScore. My ecosystem or... staff will do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we will do one, at least one round of dedupe from uh, our end. Yeah, but we still have to do it yeah, when we make the yeah. purchase. Yeah. Definitely, I mean, because uh, libraries are mm. buying from different sources also. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, we are on the dot for the one hour session. I don't see any other questions coming through. Um, but, you know, feel free to drop us a line if you still want to send questions to Stephen and Kidman uh, regarding anything on EBA or Hong Kong U program. Mm -hmm. um, so I thank you, everyone for attending um, this session. And, you know, um, I look forward to seeing some of you in our next webinar. And I thank uh, our speakers uh, for joining us today. Yeah, yeah, during the session, because I have some technical problems. So you see my staff hands around, so I'm sorry about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they're fixing the uh, battery. So yeah, it's- Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks for thank inviting you, us. for joining us, us and us. everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see you next time. Yeah, thank you.